everyone, Duke here, and today we're going over some tips and tricks for Legend Onslaught. These tips will definitely be helpful on the normal version as well, and will be mostly generalized enough to be useful for any of the maps that you want to play on. First, let's talk about the basic layout of the waves. There are a maximum of 50 waves, but you can think of it as 5 sets of 10 waves, with each set becoming increasingly more difficult. Within each set of 10 waves, there will be 5 basic waves, which is basically just kill everything to progress, and there will additionally be 5 unique waves. Two of these unique waves will be augment waves. These will happen on every wave that ends in 3 or 9, so that's 3, 9, 13, 19, etc. These are, in my opinion, the most important and most difficult rounds of them all, so I would recommend trying to have your super and heavy going into them if at all possible. There's numerous types of augments, but the Tormentor and Demolitionist augments are the two most challenging in my experience, especially the Tormentor. This is due to how tanky these enemies are and how close they spawn to you, and you'll want to balance trying to focus them down quickly with also killing the waves of smaller adds, as the smaller adds are what will tend to kill both you and the ADU you'll be protecting. On every wave that ends in 6, you will get a portal to enter the pyramid. Here you'll kill a few adds as well as 3 spark hoarders. Killing all of them will spawn a spark for one player to pick up, which will need to be dunked in the rift on the other side within one minute. This is one of the easiest waves, so try to conserve some ammo and supers here. Every tenth floor is a boss fight. You'll get a unique random augment during these fights. No matter the augment or the boss, setting up a base near the middle of the room and fighting from there is a good starting plan, with of course some movement depending on ad spawns and boss movement being important to pay attention to. The Reinforcements Augment is by far the strongest and most OP in my experience, as the turrets you can spawn in do some nice damage and also draw a ton of aggro away from you. There's two potential Well Augments as well, one of which requires standing in the middle where we're going to be setting up and playing anyway for the most part to break the shields of two mini-bosses and then will give us some bonus boss damage for the rest of the fight. Once you've done this, you no longer need to stand in the middle in order to be doing this extra boss damage. The other Well Augment will spawn mini-bosses on the sides of the room from time to time, which spawns a spark which you can then grab and dunk back in the middle, again where you're basically playing anyway. Note that these sparks do not seem to have to be dunked, meaning that you aren't penalized if you don't dunk them, so unless going for one puts you in a lot of danger, they are very well worth grabbing as they do do a considerable chunk of damage to the boss. Just if you're at the end of a wave, you don't necessarily have to go grab the next one, you can just finish off the boss and there's no downside. The mini boss can also be picked off from a distance with most weapons, so there's no need to charge straight at it, and it's also encouraged to have everyone stop damaging the boss to ensure that an ad wave doesn't spawn on top of the person grabbing the spark as they are doing so. The final unique floor is the bonus event. This will require you to do a pretty basic thing, such as pick up 20 motes, deactivate a few bombs, or complete the wave quickly. If you do these bonus tasks successfully, you'll get a heavy box for the entire team to use. You absolutely want to prioritize doing this bonus every single time, and note that this bonus event seems to be random on which wave that it will spawn on, but will spawn at least once per 10 waves, and not spawn on a wave that has one of the other unique events. Now that we know the structure of the activity, let's get into some tips. First, loadouts and more just gameplay-wise, you absolutely want to be generating orbs with your super pretty much on cooldown, accounting for also trying to have enough orbs to have it for the 3 and 9 floors that we just briefly talked about. Make sure to watch the progress bar on the left side of your screen as well, so you aren't popping a super on the last few adds of a wave. You'll want to have exactly Heavy Ammo Finder, Heavy Ammo Scout, and the siphon mod of your main ad clear weapon or weapons on your helmet. This will allow everyone to make themselves and each other heavy ammo in between the main heavy box waves and the raid flags at each boss wave, allowing for more orbs for everyone as well through the use of the siphon mod. And what may be the biggest shocker of all time, Well of Radiance continues to be outstanding, with Phoenix Protocol being a top tier option in my opinion. Similarly, a Void Hunter with Orpheus Rigs is extremely strong in an orb generating team setup, which should pretty much be every team setup. Overall, I would recommend instant non-melee supers for the most part, due to the overall weakness of a lot of the roaming supers, although Hammers is a pretty good one for Titans. And combining that with the huge amount of exploding shanks and thralls, again, makes any sort of like melee supers very risky. Even Banner of War Titan, 
a little risky in my opinion. It can definitely be good to keep you alive for sure. It can be good on some of the things that are closer. You just gotta be smart if you're gonna use something like that. You can't just go into like any wave if you're gonna use something like Banner of War. Banner of War is still really strong, it's still really good, you can use it, but just be careful on anything that's gonna be going into the enemies directly and you have to actually put yourself into the enemies to make use of it. Additionally, any sort of non-instant super can definitely be running the risk on the Tormentor waves of getting suppressed, so be careful of those as well. A Void Resist on your chest piece is highly recommended as the Shriekers, Ogres, and Tormentor are some of the most threatening enemies and do significant Void damage. The damage threat seems to rotate daily, so keep an eye on the daily threat and running that resist as well is also recommended. On your boots, there's going to be three mods you're definitely going to want to run, in my opinion. I would say Recuperation is a very, 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 very highly recommended mod. It's going to allow you to have a very easy way to just basically have heal packs on all the orbs that, again, you should be generating through whether supers or siphons. So Recuperation, highly recommended. Again, you can also have a Scavenger mod for your heavy of choice. So that will give you more heavy every time you're getting any of the heavy bricks from the ground or the Finder and Scout mods that you guys are going to be running. And then running one Surge as your third mod for the boots is going to be nice. That'll give you an additional 10% every time you have any amount of armor charge, which again, every time you pick up an orb, you're getting armor charge, you should have armor charge pretty much the whole time. So just a bonus 10% damage on your heavy, which you're going to be wanting to use a lot anyway. So super nice. And if again, you are pairing potentially your energy weapon with your heavy, having the same damage types, you could be getting the double benefit there uh, with 10% damage on your energy as well. Note that all champions can and will spawn throughout these 50 waves. There are no locked loadouts, so you can adjust in a pinch, but I've been enjoying Sunshot for Unstoppable, along with a machine gun to have very strong wave clear, preferably solar, again, as we were just talking about, to match elements for the double benefiting from solar-specific armor mods like Siphon, Reload, Surge, and Scavenger, as well as take advantage of the very potent seasonal artifact mods like Kindling Trigger, Flint Striker, and Rays of Precision. A disorienting grenade grenade launcher is extremely strong in this activity as well, with lingering dread additionally having chill clip as a potential role to be able to stun overloads. The partner dust grenade launcher from Dares of Eternity can roll disorienting grenades as well, and is craftable if you have the five needed patterns, and you can also craft it with auto loading holster, which is a bonus. My perfect role would again be with the lingering dread having auto loading chill clip and disorienting grenades. I have one with ambitious instead, which is good, but auto loading is super nice to have. One final loadout and gameplay tip, which may be one of the most important ones, is to pay attention to when you are grabbing orbs. Grabbing orbs with a full super can be a waste outside of situations where you need armor charge or need healing from recuperation. Especially if running Orpheus Rigs or Phoenix Protocol, making sure to get your half super back that you can get from these respective exotic perks and then picking up orbs is paramount towards spamming your supers. As these exotics cap out at giving you half of your super on the bar, whether or not any orbs helped you to get there. So by getting half of your super from just the exotic specifically first, and then picking up any orbs that are around you, you can get back to full super significantly faster. As for the defenses themselves, you'll get scrap to buy and upgrade these by killing enemies and throwing the balls at the ADU. You'll be able to build these defenses before wave 1, wave 4, and wave 7 of each set of 10 waves. Do note to make sure that you get and throw as many of the balls as you can to throw at the ADU, because not only do they heal the ADU, but again they give scrap, and even if the ADU is maxed in terms of its health, you actually get triple the scrap for throwing these balls at it, so it's almost more important to be throwing it at that point, just because you're going to be getting a lot more scrap to get more upgrades. There is some randomness to the options that you'll have at any given defensive area, but surveying the location and options that you have, and maxing a turret in a location that has sight of as many ad spawns as possible is a top priority by the mid to late rounds. This goes even higher if the turret has line of sight at all of the other defensive spots, as this defense will then still fight for you when you are at the other locations, as long as they haven't been destroyed. I'd also recommend at least getting every single turret that you have access to in a given location ASAP. By the time you get to the 30s and 40s waves, you're definitely going to want to be trying to get a maxed out shacks in a preferably centralized area close to the ADU, because that's where the Tormentor spawns. If you do get a Tormentor wave there, you're going to have that Tormentor spawn pretty close to the ADU, and having that max level shacks will be able to tank the Tormentor pretty much forever. It's insane. Shacks is a god. That's all I'm going to say. Really highly recommend having the shacks. Have it near the center so that you can easily get the Tormentor onto it. 
After playing for quite a few hours, I can pretty much say you're going to want to just skip the trip mines. They're not terrible, like they do have some use, but the turrets are extremely, extremely strong. Having a shacks available, as we just talked about, especially for the end waves, is extremely, extremely strong, and the trip mines don't have that same punch. I would recommend just saving whenever you don't have enough for anything else. Like if you only have enough for a trip mine, just save for other things. At the very, very end, like when you get to wave 47 or just before wave 47, that's the last time you're going to be able to buy. At that point, if you have anything extra and can't upgrade any turrets or upgrade a shacks, then buy a trip mines. You know, get, might as well get some use out of it. But other than that, I wouldn't buy trip mines pretty much ever. You'll definitely always want to communicate how much scrap that each player has before doing any upgrades, as if one person has 2500 for example and another has 4500, the order of who buys the defenses will actually matter, as you'd have to have the lower scrap player buy the first upgrade, while the higher scrap player could then buy the second. But if the higher scrap player bought that first upgrade first, then neither player would have enough to buy the second, and you'd end up having a much less efficient use of your scrap. One other thing to look for when prioritizing upgrades on defenses, other than just specific positioning, is looking for if one is about to break. You can tell a defense is close to breaking by looking for a red flash on it, but by upgrading it, it seems to also heal it to full HP, which will then save you a ton of scrap in the long run by not having to then rebuy the lower upgrades as well. And one final tip I have is to keep in mind the fact that the augment waves are on the 3s and 9s as mentioned earlier. This leads to an important takeaway in terms of when to build defenses and when to save. Building up on the wave 1s is helpful, as it will be the only time you can build before the wave 3 augment waves. However, if you are close to an important upgrade after completing the third wave in a set, it's probably worth saving for it, as you'll have another chance to build before wave 7, which is before your next crucial augment wave on wave 9. I hope this guide helped you and your team with the new Onslaught activity. Make sure to leave any tips to help others that you have that maybe I've missed in the comments below, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.